Hi, welcome to another episode of the Ambient Mellotron here on the Ambient iPad. Let's make some music. I'm going to use a couple of sounds from the Mellotron Mark I, the marimba and the mandolin. These aren't single note sounds, however, they're trills. The signal chain is the Mellotron M4000D Mini. Its direct A and B outputs are going into a Focusrite Scarlett 18i8 interface, which communicates back and forth with an iPad Pro through a USB-C hub that also lets me power the iPad Pro at the same time. We're in 8 matrix. We're going to be using two matrices today because we're using the direct outputs, one for the Mark I Marimba and one for the Mark I Mandolin. So the other thing I need to do is when I'm in each matrix, I need to make sure that the output is summed to mono for each. They'll be processed differently and they'll be the effects. I'm going to rely a lot on some effects today, which will introduce um, the stereo field where the clean sounds, <laughs> clean, <laughs> as clean as the Mellotron sounds can be, will be in mono. So that's matrix one. I just want to do this before I do anything else so I don't forget. And let's go back. I'm going to use Mixbox today, which is a multi-effects processor with a vintage look and feel. Let me just get a compressor going. Connect these now before I forget. Let's get a compressor going just so I can uh, sample the sounds. Dynamics. We'll use white 2A for here. I know the peak reduction. I'm going to want to go up a little to tame. Any peaks? All right, so this is the marimba through a compressor. And that's just in the left channel. I thought I picked this already. So now it'll be in the center, mono. Marimba trills. Now let's go and do mandolin trills. Same thing, mix box. Make this bigger. Uh, let me connect it before I forget. Make this a little bigger. Different compressor this time. How about black 76? Um, so we've got a four to one ratio, which is fine. I do want to lower the attack a little so that it the compressor grabs onto it quicker and the release down so it releases it quicker as well. And this is the mandolin. And both the mandolin and the marimba together. Let's add some more effects. First to the mandolin. We'll go back to the mandolin. Excuse me, the marimba. And I want a tape delay. So let's go to delays, tape echo. And I know I'm going to want the volume of the delay up. Uh, that's kind of, that's fine. And the tails we definitely want longer. Let me just hear what this sounds like. We might slow down the speed a little. This is marimba through the compressor and the tape echo of Mixbox. Let's just go up a little on each side here. Want to keep the delay time slightly different between the two echoes in here to get some rhythmic stuff going. And you can hear those long tails. And last, I want to add a little bit of reverb. You can hear the tape echo is really creating a pretty big reverb space. And in those cases, a lot of times adding a reverb that's different. So I don't want to add a huge hall or stage reverb that's just going to make it bigger and bigger. Instead, I'm going to add a room reverb. And that just, 
I can't really describe it, but the interaction between the longer tape echo and the room reverb will, there'll, there'll be a little more uh, forwardness to the sound. It won't all get lost if I was using a huge reverb. Do want to change some of these settings. I don't need modulation. Get the mix up to 30%. The size, just jack up the size a little and the decay a little. All right, so here is the marimba now through the compressor tape echo, and a room reverb. So we get some smearing of the sound, but that's okay. Now let's move over to the mandolin and add a couple of things in Mixbox to that. Whoops, let's use a, uh, let's use a chorus. Depth is way too high. The rate's probably good. A little lower on the dry wet. And this is the mandolin. Excuse me. We're on the mandolin now. This is the mandolin through the compressor and a chorus in Mixbox. Without the chorus. And let's add in same delay, tape echo. We're just going to use different times. Let me just raise the volume of this a little and raise the sustain for the tails. Let's go in the opposite direction. Let's hear how this sounds. So the mandolin through the compressor chorus and tape echo. That's a big sound. I'm not going to add any reverb to this. Let's hear them both together. Mandolin, marimba. All right, a little bit of a dark sound, but I Seems pretty fitting. Let's go back to the marimba. The only thing I want to add is a filter uh, for two reasons. I, I'd like it to kind of slowly go through the frequency range and maybe do a little auto panning as well. Let's use the Blias filter. Let me connect this before I forget. And actually, I'm going to send Mixbox through the filter as well, but keep the direct sound. So we're going to do series and parallel at the same time. Um, all right, I want to do that, the amount, and we're on the, we're on the marimba. I want this to be a little, a little more subtle than we're going to have for the mandolin. So like 40 degrees for the stereo field. So not huge. Again, very subtle. Marimba. All right, through Mixbox and the filter. Let me just make that a little smaller. So you can hear the gets a little darker, a little brighter. Um, you can hear part of you can hear the sound moving very you know through the stereo field not a lot we only have it on 40 degrees but also I have the direct sound from Mixbox going as well so there's always a sound kind of obviously through the effects there's a it's, it's in the stereo field but it's not moving so there's part of the sound it's almost like two sounds one is in the middle or depending on what, where the effects put, put it in the stereo field, and the other one is slowly moving around. Let me try that one more time so you can hear, I hope. <laughs> headphones, headphones help. All right, let's move over to the mandolin, and we're going to do a similar thing uh, with the Blias filter. Going to get a little more, uh, a little more aggressive with the settings. First thing I want to do is connect this. 
So we want a lot, let's say 90%. And the stereo, I'm going to do 90 degrees. I want this to be big. Or want to hear this one going around the stereo field a little more back and forth. Panning. It's really panning. Really hard to find movements. I've talked about this with the iPad Pro before. Um, and a lot of people have left comments or messaged me and said, hey, try the Apple Pencil. That makes it easier. Um, I do have an Apple Pencil. It does not make it easier. <laughs> um, your finger actually is pretty accurate uh, as far as the tip goes. So I do want this to be a little more, go through the frequency range. Let's try this out. Mandolin through Mixbox. Let's send Mixbox through the filter and the BS filter. Let's do 100%. But you can hear this is a little more dramatic than the marimba. Let's add them both together now. Let me go back to the marimba side. So we'll, um, you know, we've got, again, we've got the marimba on an instrument slot A and the mandolin on instrument slot B. I can uh, control the mix uh, between the two instruments with the mix knob. But anyways, here's the mandolin and the marimba from the Mark I Mellotron. more marimba just slightly it's interesting down here and this is more the marimba than the mandolin it's a very 80s kind of sound that breathy that breathy, um, you know, Roland, Roland or Yamaha kind of sound from that era. It's dark. You know, the sounds are dark to begin with. I'm adding a filter in here. This is definitely a more darker sounding jam. I have it just slightly more the volume on the marimba side, only because the mandolin is a little more towards the treble side of the frequency range, so that's coming through a little more. The other thing I might do, um, so you've got this low-high switch here, which essentially just changes the speed of the sample. Um, let me demonstrate that just with the marimba. Uh, because I think I'm going to use this in the jam too. So I'll start with it high, I'll go low. So it slows the sample down, goes really low. I like that. I'm going to put that in there. So the instruments are all set up. We've got the two separate matrices. Um, I think I, for a melodic touch point or head, um, one of the things that I was kind of doing while I was demonstrating the effects. All right, so we took those, we're going to take these two sounds that were of trills. Uh, again, the Mellotron, a lot of the sounds, I mean, this instrument is just the modern Mellotron. It's not trying to do anything other than that. So it's not filled up with sounds that may fit or may not fit. Instead, it's filled up with sounds that were part of the original Mellotron, which... And the Mellotron Mark I, that it was meant to be a home instrument, not, <laughs> not in a band and not in, a, you know, not, not in a jamming setting. So, uh, but part of the fun for me to do this is taking these sounds that by themselves are like, huh, what are you going to do with this? Adding effects and, 
using a couple of different sounds uh, and going back and forth between them just to, you know, see what I can come up with. And, and, and to me, that's, that's part of the fun of doing all this is, is taking those sounds that are a little more oddball and trying to make something ambient from them. So let's do a jam.
The modern Mellotron is true to its roots. It includes a lot of different instruments and sounds from across the original Mellotron family. Now some of those sounds, well, it's tough to find how to use them in a musical setting. In those cases, I rely on effects to manipulate and transform those sounds completely. So the next jam will be the 50th one I've done, and I'm going to do something a little different. In addition to an improv, I'll also do some Q&A. So if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them below and I'll address them in the next improv. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and good luck with your own music.